So what's been another incredible day for Australian cycling with Orica Green Edge winning today's 25km time trial in Nice and catapulting Simon Gerrans into the race leader's yellow jersey. On the back of Gerrans' historic stage victory yesterday in Corsica, the whole team dug deep in the time trial. One of the last groups to start, Orica hunted down the time set by Mark Cavendish's Omega Quick Step team. Three, they're sitting up as they hit the line. They have done it by 0.75 of a second. Paul, that is an outstanding performance. And they hung on, putting the entire team of Michael Alabasini, Simon Clark, Matt Goss, Daryl Impey, Brett Lancaster, Cameron Meyer, Stuart O'Grady and Seven Tuft on the podium and see Gerrans dressed in the leader's yellow. It was just a fantastic team effort, that, that exactly, it really sums it up perfectly. Everyone committed 100% today, as they did yesterday, and it's fantastic today that we get rewarded with a team win and, and the yellow jersey to top it off. A tough day for Cadell Evans, though, who lost crucial time in the race for overall honours. While you had to feel for Garen Thomas, he raced with a hairline fracture of the hip to help get race favourite Chris Froome up on the pace in the race for top spot. Australia's new test opening pair haven't taken long to shine with Shane Watson and Chris Rogers both starring on day one of their final warm-up match for the Ashes. Watson belted 109 of just 111 against Worcestershire as he combined with Rogers for a 170 run opening stand. All the top order got amongst the runs as Australia cruised to stumps. Four for 340. After cracking 14 fours and two sixes, Watson opted for a single to bring up a stylish hundred and only reaffirm his spot at the top of Australia's batting order. Meanwhile, English spinner Graham Swan has put any concerns over his arm injury to rest. He returned to take the final wicket for England in their warm-up match against Essex just a day after he was struck on the arm while batting. Alastair Cook in the runs as well for the host nation with the first test to start next week. Sabine Lasicki has backed up her giant killing win over world number one Serena Williams with a dominant straight sets victory to reach the semi-finals of Wimbledon. The day wasn't without another upset with Kirsten Flipkins stunning former champion Petra Kvitova. Marian Batoli defeated American Sloane Stephens, while Agneska Rodvonska won an epic clash with China's Li Na and will now take on Germany's Lasicki for a place in the final. The 23rd seed was full of confidence, breaking Kaya Kanepi in just the first game of the match. She slipped momentarily in the second set, three double faults in one game, handing Kanepi an easy break. But she broke back straight away, before then powering away to victory in just a little over an hour. She got it. Chanel take on last year's runner-up, Rodwanska, after she won a tough three-set battle against Lee Na. Collingwood and Carlton head into Friday night's blockbuster on the back of defeats and placed unusually in eighth and ninth on the AFL ladder. As the run to the finals begins, former Bombers vice-captain Mark McVeigh told Sports Night with James Bracey there's more at stake for the Blues. If Carlton lose, they're in a lot of trouble. Yep. I reckon they'll keep going further back and may struggle to make the eight. If Collingwood lose, we still think there'll be a chance. They'll be just out or just in, but they'll still get some of their key players back. So I think the Pies will win, but if Carlton was to lose it, I think the ramifications will be bigger for them than what it would be for Collingwood. McVeigh also believes his former teammate Job Watson has been unfairly treated by some sections of the media since admitting to being given an anti-obesity drug. Sonny Bill Williams is set to delay his return to rugby union for one more year. News Limited is reporting that the Jewel International will re-sign with the Roosters on a deal worth around $1 million for the 2014 NRL season. The club is expected to be flexible with Williams' boxing ambitions. But Rugby League is likely to lose the Kiwi back to Union in 2015 when Williams makes a return to the All Blacks for the Rugby World Cup. Meanwhile, the British and Irish Lions insist they didn't force the IRB to appeal James Horwell being initially cleared of a stamping charge. The Wallaby skipper's place in the third and deciding test was on the line before given the green light finally yesterday. But former Lion Lewis Moody believes the process was a farce and Hall was in the role. The IRB, I don't think, actually had the power to overrule it. They were just, they were just uh, looking into the official and whether he'd made the right decisions and actually, so they couldn't change the decision, I don't think. So it was all a bit of a farce. 
The Lions are chasing their first series win in 16 years in Saturday's decider in Sydney.